It's taken me three years to get through half a book. This is nonsense. Chapter eight. But you're not even married. He shook his head, a smile curving his lips. <sighs> Jesus. Okay, now that, that literally went, I have like purple feathers everywhere. Again, why do I own this? No, I am not married, Kara. But a man does not need to be married to have a mistress. In her world, men didn't come out and say things like that. Neither. He saw the confusion on her face, and he stoked it. Okay. Wait, as in stoking a fire? Unless it means to say that he stroked her confused face. Um, he's talking a lot here, and it's very annoying. Yet how could she even consider what he had just proposed? Wasn't such a bold proposition hugely insulting? Yes, is the answer to that question. It's a lot to take in, she said, wondering why he'd said anything at all. Why couldn't he have just made love to her and taken her out again? The asshole. Because then you might start getting the wrong idea, you idiot. You might start thinking you had some kind of future of him and he is making it crystal clear from the very start that nothing like that is ever going to happen. Uh. But Jessica tried for a moment to resist him, but it was just a moment. Her body was greedy for him, warm and soft, as she welcomed him in. That's good. Y yes. You want more? You know I do. Deeply. He thrust inside her. <sighs> Hearing her gasp, gasp again, watching her face as passion melted away the last of her lingering doubts, and listening as her eventful, shuddering little cries pierced the air and my soul forever. Only then did he allow himself to let go, falling over into a place of incredible sweetness. Afterwards, they lay spent in each other's arms. Salvatore stroked lazily at her soft skin. Still damp with... Exertion, phew. As he inhaled her flowery perfume, which was now mixed with his own raw elemental scent. <laughs> he has his own scent that emanates from him just because he's Salvatore What's-His-Face. You are sleepy? Jessica opened her eyes. Yes, her body was tired, but her mind was racing. So perhaps we better go get something to eat and then I'll get going. Going? Where? Jessica looked at him. Wait. Home, of course. Now he was taken aback, a state of being completely unknown to him. Usually he could just read a woman like a well-thumbed book. Unlike this one. But for once in his life he was perplexed. Was the inconceivable happening? Was Jessica Martin walking out? Normally he traps the women in his apartment and they never leave. If she was trying to test him, then she would soon discover that he would not be manipulated. But I don't think it's such a good idea. WHY NOT?! Well, for a start, I haven't brought a change of clothes with me. And why not? You didn't think you'd end up in bed with me tonight? Listen, I'll have some supper with you first, and then I'll go home. You sound like my nurse! Her mouth crumpled into a smile. If I were your nurse, Silicon, then I would have broken my professional code rather spectacularly. <laughs> she reached down to the plate of grapes and popped one of her mouth, holding up another in front of his. Here, have one. I think she's lost it. I don't want a damned grape! Incredulously, he watched as she slid off his bed. I just have the image of her literally just sliding off and slumping onto the floor. He wasn't going to stop her from leaving, because all the other women reported police reports, and then that was just a whole mess. Jessica picked up her panties and slithered into them, and clipped her bra closed. She didn't put it on, she just clipped it closed. Jessica? Yes, Salvatore? You will not wear those things again when you are with me. Tights? Yes, tights! Whoever invented them should be shot! Women should wear nothing but lacy stockings and suspender belts! Oh, shit. <laughs> There we are. And then Jessica looked at Silicon, for he had stuck a feather to his head. Why'd you wear your dresses so long? He questioned idly. This scene should have ended pages ago. It hides your legs. Your beautiful legs. It's Willow's dress, she confessed bravely. My housemate, Jessica elaborated and was slightly horrified at the feeling of relief which shot through her. Why? It's the dress I'm wearing. Willow's dress. I borrowed it. She keeps going on about the... Cut to the publishing office. Sharon Kendrick, this is only 180 pages. We need six more pages. Hmm, I know. I'll put all the pages in the discussing the dress scene. We'll discuss the dress for a whole fucking chapter. And when he had reached her, he lifted both her hands to his lips and kissed each fingertip in turn, like a man playing a harmonica. 
Four hours later, I don't want you wearing secondhand clothes anymore. Jessica opened her mouth to tell him it wasn't as easy as that, but he forestalled her with a swift shake of his ruffled, dark head. That you can't afford to buy clothes of this quantity. Well, I can't, and one of the many advantages of being a rich man is that I can- No! Oh yes, do not protest, Jessica, for your protests are unnecessary. You see, his voice deepened, it will give me great pleasure to bite you and address you from the skin up. Stop mentioning skin! It's creepy! I do not want you wearing these ugly little bra and panties anymore, either. Just... why can't you be happy with her being comfortable? Get your fucking act together, man. If it's so disappointing for you, why don't you go off and find someone whose looks do appeal? You appeal to me very much. Oh no, that was... <laughs> you... Okay, here's an experiment. I'm just gonna switch them around character-wise, and I'll put the mask on when she's talking, because I just did it by accident. You appeal to me very much, he said softly. Salvatore! But he was teasing her with his kiss, pulling her closer into his warm, naked body, hard up against the unmistakable force of his You still wish to go? I must. His mouth hardened. Very well. So be it. Good night, Salvatore, she said. And picking up her handbag, she hurried towards the door before he could see any of the gnawing anxieties which were eating her up. Gilbert Grape. Page 100, chapter 9, Death is Imminent. I don't think Sharon Kendrick had an editor. I think she ran this through a random word generator and just, like, inputted, like, sexy and blue eyes every so often. I would like to promise that I will burn this when I'm done reading it. That's my fucking motivation. I'd be stoked. <laughs>